Now in this last part, what we've got to do is work out the speed of the ball as it hits the ground at R. And let's just mark that speed in. Well, let's mark the velocity in really because we can put the direction it's going in. It's going in a direction that's a tangent to the curve. So if this were the curve, it's going to look something like this, okay, uh, moving in that direction. There's two ways that we can get this speed v. We can think of splitting it up into two components. There'll be the one that's acting horizontal and there'll be the one that's going downwards. Okay, The one that's horizontal is going to always be constant. That will be the 36.9433 and so on. As for this vertical one, we could work that out quite easily because from the previous part we worked out what the time of flight was, this value 4.6947. So you could do a SUVAT based equation and work out what this value is down here. And then use Pythagoras' theorem on these two components to get what V is. But that's quite a lot of work. There is a quicker way for this particular problem anyway, and that is to consider energy. And if we consider energy, what we've got to do is say, well, okay, what type of energy did we have up here? We've got gravitational potential energy, and we've got kinetic energy. We've got gravitational potential energy if we look relative to the ground here. So what happens is it loses gravitational potential energy at the expense of gaining kinetic energy. So by energy we can say that the gain in kinetic energy is equal to the loss in gravitational potential energy. And that forms the basis of our equation. So what is the gain in kinetic energy? Well, it's going to be the kinetic energy at R, which is a half mv squared, minus the initial kinetic energy, which will be a half m times 40 squared. And that's equal to the loss in gravitational potential energy. It had potential energy up here, gravitational potential energy of mgh, which would be m times g, times h, which was 36 meters. It had no gravitational potential energy down here at OR, if we take that as our zero level. So we've got a simple equation here that we can solve for V, because there's an M in every term, so we can cancel out the M. Now if we multiply through by 2 here, you're going to find that you get V squared minus 40 squared equals twice g times 36. 2 times g at 9.8 times the 36. Add 40 squared to both sides, you get v squared then equals 2 times 9.8 times 36 plus the 40 squared. And if you work that out, you actually end up with 2,000 305.6. So to get v, we just need to square root that value. And if we square root 2305.6, it ends up being 48.016 and so on. And if we round this to two significant figures, it turns out to be 48 meters per second then to two significant figures, 2SF. Now, as I say, you could do it by the component version, and uh, I'll leave it up to you just to check that out. Use SUVAT, say, for working out the vertical motion, get this velocity here, then use Pythagoras' theorem on these two components, and you should end up with 48 meters per second. But I think you'll agree that this method was a lot quicker. Okay, 